Based off with Tyron, I mean, we all knew you'd tower over him, but when you got there, did it surprise even you how much bigger you were? Uh, a little bit. Uh, I just, I think, as, I, as I've said a few times now, I just made myself look big, you know, I, I puffed my chest out, I put my arms in the air, you know, it was sort of that stance that made me look bigger, but yeah, I was on that day significantly, you know, uh, significantly bigger than Tyron. I just think with Tyron's top off, he is a big guy though, he's, you know, his, his chest is buff, his big arms, his huge legs, so in, in, in the octagon, it, there will be a slight difference, but not, not massively, because he, he's a big dude. So lay out the perfect scenario, you're saying 185 is on the, on the horizon, lay out the future for Darren Till, you win this belt, you defend once, or how many times, is there a name, and then you go, well, give me, what's the perfect scenario for Darren Till? <laughs> Everyone, I just, I want to, I just want to win this belt. And then, you know, I, I want to defend it. I just want to be able to say I've defended it, you know. So you could be looking at two, three fights at welterweight and then, you know, that that's me done. I, I'm not putting, I'm 25 now, I'm not putting my body through this, you know, for much longer. It, it's, I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm here today, I'm, I'm, I'm great. I'm, I've got me, me chef with me, oh, and he's fucking doing a perfect job. I feel good. I just... I just want to be able to eat some white white rice. <laughs> I'm just fucking hungry. That's what it is. I just, it, it, I don't. I'm starting to, as I get older, I'm starting to see that it's it's just not necessary. You know, it's a lot of weight to cut, and I, and I don't need to do it. You know, and I started at welterweight. I'm gonna finish at welterweight, and my ultimate goal is to be the welterweight champion. In two weeks, I can be making that goal a reality, and then after that. I, I want to defend, and then it's probably me going to middleweight. So that that's how I see my future playing out. Because that is the big concern. You know, Dan mentioned it before we played the interview out then. Um, it's all about Dan until making £170 the day before this fight. As long as he makes £170 on September the 7th, I think he's got all the attributes to become the new champion on September the 8th. Uh, Cameron Roseman went on record this week, Dan, saying that Till reminded him of Rumble Johnson constantly trying to make 170. <laughs> well, I mean, Rumble Johnson was always huge, even even when he was fighting at 170. I, I feel like Darren Till is in a slightly different phase of his career because he's around that age, and I remember hitting that point. I was talking to it about about it with a couple of friends the other day. It's like you're 26, you're 27, and I'm like I'm walking around about 79 kilos because I'm fighting every couple of weeks. I hit 28, and all of a sudden I was 85 kilos every day, and I had to start cutting weight. And it, it was just there was a point where my body just jumped up in weight, and then it happened again when I hit my early 30s. And I think I think Till's at that point where his body's ready to become a middleweight. And I think, you know, we, we might see him defend the belt once if he wins uh, against Woodley. But after that, I think he's going to be a middleweight. Yeah, he's adamant he wants to defend the belt. He definitely does want to get it in. But I'll be honest, I think if he makes 170 on September the 7th, he won't ever make 170 again. You think it'll be a one, win the title and hand it back? I, I just, I don't know about hand it back, but he'll certainly go for, he'll certainly go to add the middleweight belt and then his, his career will move forward from there. So I, I know even Colin has said privately as well that, you know, why why do you want to do this to his body? You know, his body's naturally growing. And obviously, the more times he gets down to 170, um, the long-term effects are not going to be beneficial to him. So, uh, Darren's adamant, uh, I say, the, the whole rhetoric out of the team is that he will win it and then he will make a defence of it. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised. This is a gigantic spot for you because, of course, he was the interim champion and and some would consider him maybe the official champion because he never lost the belt. Of course, he got injured. And now you're in the co-main event. Like, I, I, I feel like for you, you couldn't have scripted a better scenario for you, right? Oh, man. I could, I'm telling you, when they called, I was like, they said Tony Ferguson has to say no more. Send the contract. Um, stylistically, you look at him and, and the way he fights – do you feel like this action? You love it. I, Why? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not ashamed to say. Like I think he has a great fighting style. I think he's one of them guys that comes and brings it. So I'm excited to get in there with a guy like that. Like not gonna go there and try to wrestle him. He's gonna. He's gonna try to finish the fight, and that's what I'm gonna try to be doing the whole time. But he has a funky style, though, right? It's 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 somewhat unorthodox. Will you try to bring in yeah, anyone? Yeah, most deaf. Most deaf. Um, no, you know what? I'm. I don't need anybody, man. I'm uh, hopefully Paul Felder can get back to work soon. Paul Felder. I got Jared Gordon here. I got Tyron Woodley here. I got. We got we got a crazy squad right now. I mean, everybody on my team has big fights coming up. Manny Sanders said, uh, "So, uh, no, nah, I'm I'm just gonna just stick to what I know." I mean, like my last camp, I did it the best. You know, I I didn't really worry about the wrestling. I focused on my jiu-jitsu, focused on my striking. 
Um, if it comes down to the wrestling, you know, it, it happens, and, and I, I'll get my points back where, where I'm good. And what about the fact that I feel like if you win this fight, you're the number one contender? Has that been said be. to you? Once I, yeah, once I win this fight, I, I'm, I'm right back in the mix, and that's that's what I'm excited about, man. This is that's what I wanted to be. I tell I tell my my goal this year in the beginning was top top ten, top five, title shot, and uh, you know I couldn't have lined up better. <laughs> Look at this fat guy. <laughs> Coach, he's <laughs> Coach, look at this bad guy. You skinny coach now. Daniel Cormier now obviously the heavyweight champion of the UFC as still the light heavyweight champion. If John Jones comes back at heavyweight and it gets booked for November the 3rd at UFC 230, who wins that? Who wins that? Because we saw Daniel Cormier take out Stipe Miocic and he looked great at heavyweight, Dan. So who wins the third fight with them at a different weight? You know, dare I say it, I think John Jones wins it. <laughs> I think John Jones wins it at any weight class. You know, whether, whether he's you know whether he's clean or not, I, I think he's been clean the majority of his career. I don't think, I think the mistakes that he's made have been short-sightedness, you know, not, not being... Uh, not being too observant of his uh, of his of his diet of what he's taking in during uh, during his you know um, what's it called the testing period the uh, the window of of competition. I mean, the th the thing he tested positive for that he'd had after the weigh-ins was just a, a ridiculous oversight. Surely, I, I kind of have to f forgive him a little bit and think that a lot of it is just is just him not being a professional. And I hate to say that, but it's. That that's that's more what stands out than anything else is is just his lack of professionalism. But I think that he's probably learned these lessons now, and I think that will probably allow him to become the best version of himself that he's ever going to be. And he is he's so dangerous, no matter what weight he's at. He's got the reach of Stefan Struve. You've got to you've got to keep that in mind when he steps up to heavyweight. Yep. I think John Jones beats him at Conkers. He beats him at Tiddlywinks. He beats him at table tennis. I think the only thing DC's favourite in would be a hot dog eating contest, to be honest. <laughs> oh, double chin. Yeah. Do you know, I'd watch all of those contests between John Jones and Daniel Cormier. I don't think there has ever been a better rivalry, especially because of the fact that he lost one of the bouts through a drug suspension. I don't, can you think of a better rivalry than those two? I don't know. Eubank Ben was pretty good. <laughs> Eubank Ben was good, but there's, in the UFC, there's been some. Yeah, well, there's been some better fights that have that have thrown rubber matches and things like that. Obviously, for me, this rivalry is it, it's been entertaining, but it's been so one sided when the action gets down to it. In UFC history, we've seen a lot more fights go one way than the other, and then we've needed a, a rubber match decider. But this is certainly a a, fight, a a rivalry that will continue. I think Cormier right now will feel as the heavyweight champion. The advantages are back towards him because he could have he could he won't be dieting. He will be full size. He he won't. He's in a weight class that he's never lost a fight in before. I think that's why there's been no noise of him going back down to light heavy. But I don't think it's going to come next either. I still think Daniel Cormier will fight Brock Lesnar next, and I think John Jones is going to have to wait his turn next spring. Oh come on! There's no wait in the turn. I think Brock Lesnar's a big name, but if John Jones was back at two thirty, DC would take it. I don't know. But I, I, I don't it, know. I think Brock Lesnar is a big name that Don, Daniel Cormier would love to have on his resume and that's a far easier fight than John Jones but imagine how much it would burn if John Jones did swoop in and beat Daniel oh. Cormier and then sit there ready for Brock Lesnar exactly. to come back Cormier, I mean, that would... Cormier wouldn't be able to show his, his face in his own, own, own household Come on, the that would be the nail in the coffin. That would be really bad. I, I kind of never want to see that happen no, to DC me neither. because he I've already seen it. him cry you know, <laughs> after his losses it's heartbreaking because I, I know what it feels like to lose, and but not on that kind of stage, not with that kind of pressure and that kind of rivalry. I mean, that's like someone stealing your soul, surely. Yeah, the stage has been set now with the Brock Lesnar pantomime, nose to nose after the Stipe victory. That's got to play out. That narrative has got to play out. And Daniel Cormier deserves to have his hand raised over a stricken uh, Brock Lesnar. But this fight will happen. It will be John Jones next year, and John Jones will be the new heavyweight champion.